Hi, my name is Lynn, and this is my 5x10 foot Avid CNC machine. Since this is such a large unit, it presents certain challenges in terms of setting up the spoil board, since it's larger than a standard sheet of plywood or MDF. So I thought I would go over uh, setting that up up to this point, and also dust collection, and some work holdings for securing different things for cutting. So that's what this video is going to be about. Now I have all the files that I'm going to refer to, uh, carving out for the T-tracks, work holdings, that kind of thing. I have those available for free uh, to my patrons at $5 and up, um, but I'll go over more of that later on. So first of all, let me go over the area a little bit. So this is my shop and I have the CNC machine set up here in the corner, right next to uh, one of the garage doors, which is really handy because you can just open them up and then bring in you know, sheet goods, um, for easy access and you don't have to lift so much. And then I also have some space right over here uh, where I store most of that. So this machine needs uh, two power wires and an ethernet cable and I didn't want anything on the floor. So I have everything going up towards the ceiling. Now I have the computer that's operating this machine in a separate room right over there. So if you, you come with me here, you can see here's the, like the office. The idea is to be able to close this off completely, put in uh, some windows, so that it's a very quiet and dust-free environment uh, when this is operating. Like even though, you know, we have dust collection set up um, and that works well, sometimes, you know, it still adds some dust in the air. So it's nice to have a very clean and uh, dust-free environment uh, when you're doing design work and just when the machine is running for an extended period of time. So this is the computer that operates the CNC machine and where I do my design work. And it's sitting here on the desk, that was a recent project that was all cut uh, out of one sheet of plywood on the CNC as well. Oh, and, and let me give you guys a little hint over here too. Here's the first project cut out of PVC. This is a sign. I'm going to make this a video. Uh, it's going to be a whole thing, uh, but it cut really nicely on the PVC. And in general, this space is like a hand tool, workshop, design, assembly, clean space. And this is going to have a new bench coming soon. That's going to be a project as well. And I'm going to be doing a more thorough shop tour coming up pretty soon, uh, whereas I'm mostly going to focus on the CNC machine and the, the setup for that in this video. So let's go back to that. So initially I actually used this machine a couple of times without dust collection when cutting small things, and, and now that's okay, but once I started cutting bigger things, you really wanted to uh, set up dust collection because it gets dusty. So currently I'm using this uh, Dustrite 1250 CFM, um, dust collector. It's dedicated just for this machine and it's been working really good. So currently uh, there are two four-inch hoses coming off it going over to the spindle here and that definitely seems to be the key in terms of getting good dust collection uh, with the CNC here is to have two hoses. What I really would like to do eventually is to put in one six-inch hose and then split that off into uh, two four-inch hoses uh, over there. Uh, but this is working good. Um, of course, the key to that is having these hoses being um, carried up because once uh, this machine moves around, they're actually rather heavy and you don't want them to kind of get in the way uh, in terms of the spindle. So the way that uh, we have solved that is ceiling tracks. So, so these tracks are uh, attached to the joists. So it will move freely as the machine moves and uh, yeah, that's been really great. So these tracks you can easily cut to make them smaller and we have put them like everywhere in the ceiling here uh, to carry dust hoses all around as well as cords. Um, so everything is neat and out of the way. Now, in terms of the spoil board here, since this is a five by 10 machine, it's a pretty big distance to cover. So what we decided to do was to first put down two five by five sheets of half inch Baltic birch plywood. So that's going from here to here. And so that's really nice because the Baltic birch is uh, super straight and solid and covers the whole distance. Um, of course, in order to do that, um, I had to put in some extra support right under here. Because 
where I wanted the two Baltic birch pieces to butt up. Uh, there were no aluminum rails there uh, to support it. So what we did was to add a two by four on one of these rails going through the rolling T-nut slots and then add a second and then a third, uh, which gives you a distance of four and a half inches to screw into. So plenty to get those two pieces nice and secured on that seam right there. Now, once the, uh, the plywood was down, we added uh, some MDF. Um, and one of the goals here was kind of to not lug around any sheets and cut them on the table saw or anything else, but have the machine here do all the work. So I had to cut up like an extra strip, an extra section of MDF from a, a second sheet. Um, but the machine did all of that and then just butted it all together and then secured it with uh, composite nails. So once the MDF was down, it's time to surface the whole thing. Uh, but before that, I want to make sure that it was level. Uh, this, this is a garage, and like most garages, it slopes down gently. The leveling at the far end, next to the garage door, the middle. The foot right in the front. But then once that was taken care of, I used a two inch carbide cutter for surfacing. and ran it to cut 0.05 inches at one pass at 300 inches per minute. And this was really the only time when the dust collection had a little bit of an issue keeping up because uh, I think I was running the machine a little bit too aggressively and there was a lot of MDF dust in the space here. So I thought it would be neat to add T-tracks to this whole thing. And obviously you can add them <laughs> like everywhere, uh, but I, I didn't want to go crazy with them. So what we decided to do was to add them at a 10 inch distance. So all the way down. So I carved out grooves and the T-tracks can easily be cut on the miter saw. And I used a quarter inch up cut and cut to a depth of 0.45 inches and 0.75 inches wide at 300 inches per minute. Now one reason why I really like the idea of having the, uh, the plywood underneath here is that once you cut down this section in the MDF, you don't have a whole lot of wood left <laughs> to use in terms of getting screws down. So after the, uh, the T-tracks are down and they are, are inset a little bit, then the, the screws go through the MDF, but they also go into the plywood to secure both the MDF sheet as well as the T-tracks down. But then to cut out a fair amount of inserts as well, right in the front here. So then by adding more inserts in between, you can add a variety of hold downs and combine things and it gives you more flexibility. So then the next thing to kind of go over here a little bit are the work holdings. Now obviously you can get a lot of cool clamps and stuff for T-tracks. And I have a bunch of really nice ones from Rockler that go into the tracks and that can also go into the inserts. Um, but of course what's nice when you have a CNC machine is that you can cut out a lot of work holding options as well uh, to kind of combine depending on what it is that you're trying to hold down. So let me go over the work holdings here a little bit. Um, I began with first making uh, these solid ones that fit perfectly in these square areas a little bit everywhere. Um, and those are really good, but then I figured it's kind of useful to be able to slide some clamps into the T-tracks as well and make them a little bit more flexible. So the bolt goes in the T-tracks and slide, and that way you can, you can move this depending on where you need it to go. So I guess the point here is that the machine cut out both the, uh, the whole pattern in the spoil board as well as in these work holdings, so that everything is perfectly 90 degrees. When you're ready to cut a sheet of plywood or whatever, you can just butt it up right here. So one thing I found useful for making this is this hardware kit um, that offers a variety of heights for these different ones. So depending on if you're cutting something, you know, kind of high or you need different heights here. Um, these also come with inserts, but I actually preferred, uh, I ordered some other inserts from Rockler that I, th I think were a little bit better. 
um, but these come with this as well. And they come with these knobs um, if you don't want to make your own. You know, sometimes you want to make your own, sometimes you don't. So this kit gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, I also have cams. Um, and again, these can go into T-Tracks as well as into the inserts. So these are also useful for like moving something and, and clamping something down. And I have these available in like two different sizes as well. Um, I didn't want to go overboard with like adding a ton of tea tracks and stuff just for the uh, event that you may need something in the future. I figured you can just add stuff down the road um, if you need a solution later on because it's easy enough to cut out uh, new brackets or you know put in new inserts or put in another tea track or whatever it is that you need then. So I found these pieces really useful like when cutting the PVC sign that I showed before and just for a variety of things. When I'm cutting just regular plywood, uh, I've been primarily using this composite nail gun, uh, which is really nice because the nails are not made out of metal. So if you shoot your plywood down and the bit happens to uh, hit it, it's not a big deal. Also, since I hate having things on the floor, I found this hose reel uh, rather handy because that way this is always plugged in, ready to go, uh, but the hose is not on the ground, so that's kind of nice. Um, oh yeah, come here. Um, I wanted to show this. This is another cool uh, reason to put inserts in. So here I have carved out inserts that perfectly fit this vise right here. So this is a drill press vise, and I have four inserts cut right here so I can secure uh, this down. Um, and then put metal down when carving that. Uh, so it's a little bit more secure than any other way. At this point, I don't really have any big plans for cutting metal. I'm not gonna get an aluminum table or anything, but what I think I might do is like do some fine carvings and things like that and add those to little projects because I think that is really neat and that this should provide a good surface to hold that down. The other thing that I've also been using is when you do painter's tape, that you tape on both the surface here and on the other side of whatever it is that you're cutting, so a piece of plywood or something. And then you can use a glue with an activator on both sides, put it down, get a super secure situation. And then once you're done, you can just peel off the blue tape. Um, so I used that when I was cutting these little models. So received quite a few questions about this game controller. So I, I use this to jog the machine, and that's because the computer that's controlling the machine is in the other room. If you had the computer right here, you can use the keyboard, but since it's not, it's nice to have this controller. So this is really nice because it's wireless. Well, I have uh, a corded uh, game controller right here, and as you can see, it's really short, and it wouldn't be nearly enough to reach the other room. I would need like 25 feet of cord or something like that. So basically what you do is you download this free software, I'll put a link in the description, and it enables you to control the keyboard with this game controller. And it works really, really well. This is my kid's favorite thing to do, <laughs> to move this around. <laughs> So you may wonder why is this like space open here in the front and that's because I'm planning on getting the uh, the rotary axis which basically is like a lathe for the CNC machine so you can turn things so there's a little extra space right in the front there for that um, but otherwise you know some things may change over time depending on what uh, we decide to to use it for and cut but this is the state at this point. And you know, I was thinking first, like I was not trying to create like the ultimate setup here in terms of the spoil board, but I think that like, it can really like hold down most things, especially with these various work holdings. Um, it's been quite effective and I've been trying to clamp for various things and it's working really well. And I'm gonna uh, put all of these work holdings into a file and they are available for free for my patrons over at patreon.com uh, slash Darbin Orver. I'll put a link in the description and I'm also going to put them in my shop for sale for anyone who's not a patron because that's a new thing that I'm doing for my patrons. I'm uh, having all of my various plans and files available for free. Past and future, so just something to keep in mind. Um, I'm also going to put links in the description to any of the products that I mentioned um, as well as the link to the game controller software and the game controller itself. Uh, so yeah, I think that is about it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.